What's up guys, this is Danny from My Flying Eyes and today we're going to talk about one of the most difficult things to shoot from a drone which is kite surfing. Some people call it kite surfing, others call it kite boarding. The fact is, I found it to be one of the most exciting and difficult sports to shoot from a drone. So I'm gonna share some of my experiences and a number of things I tried to make those shootings more successful. We're gonna talk about safety, kite surfing gear, drone settings, camera settings, pilot position, drone position, altitude, different types of shots, dealing with the wind and dealing with the sun. Safety is always one of the main concerns when shooting kite surfing from a drone. The temptation to get a close epic view of the surfer could lead us to get too close and increase the chances of a collision with the kite sail or the lines. Picture an imaginary umbrella around the surfer and always stay out of it. Never get inside this umbrella space unless you previously agree with the surfer and he is aware of the drone position at all times. Note that even if you do this, you are going to be in danger and you have high chances of colliding with the sail or the lines and losing your drone into the ocean. The easiest way to stay outside the kite surfing umbrella space is by going above it. But you must also be aware of other threats like small planes or especially helicopters that tend to fly pretty low around the beach. It is a good idea to go and fly with the company of another pilot or a friend so while one stay focused on flying and getting good shots, the other one can act as a visual observer and search the sky for dangers. It is key that the visual observer stay focused on your drone and doesn't get distracted by checking on his cell phone or watching the beautiful girls at the beach or any other distraction. So a good way to prevent that is asking about your drone clearance every 30 seconds. Kite surfing gear consists on a board, a group of lines called the flying lines and the kite sail. The lines and sail dimensions could go from 21 to 90 feet long. So in order to stay above the kite sail, I would advise you to fly at least at 120 feet altitude. When high speed winds are around, the kite surfers tend to do the lift, which consists on take off from the water, glide, a few seconds over the ocean until they land again on the water. Be aware that when they do this, they tend to go a little bit higher. Kite surfers used to go out when the weather is pretty windy, so you might want to increase your drone speed response and change your EXP settings. You might want to set your forward, right, backward, left to at least 0.35 or even 0.40. That's how I use it. I leave my throttle up down at 0.25 and my rudder right and left to 0.17, which are my normal EXP settings. In order to catch the surfers, you're going to be traveling pretty long distances from one kite surfer to another one. So another option is to fly in sports mode. When you fly in sports mode, uh, all the settings go to 0.35. So this could not be the best setting for getting cinematic shots. So another option is to fly in sports mode to get closer to the surfer and then switch to normal mode to get your cinematic take.
I'm using a DJI Mavic 2 zoom so I can zoom in and have a close enough view while staying outside of the kite umbrella space. So I strongly recommend to use the zoom if you have the feature available on your drone. Slow motion is always a good way to achieve that epic looking shot. So filming in 60 frames per second is always a good idea. If you have 4K at 60 frames per second, like the DJI Inspires or the Phantom 4 or even the Auto Evo, I strongly recommend that setting. In my case, with the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom, I shoot at 2.7K in 60 frames per second, which still gives me a good quality picture in case I have to zoom in in post-production. I would always choose my takeoff operating spot at a prudent distance from where the kite surfers do their setup and go into the water. You don't want to upset the surfers or make them feel threatened by your drone. So stay away at least 200 feet from them. It is also important to have a good perspective of the whole kite surfing scene. Take some distance so you can watch the whole area. A good option is operating from a cliff where you can observe everything from a higher point of view. And if the cliff is higher than 120 feet and you make sure you are above the sky sails, then you can use your takeoff point as a reference. And if you don't fly in negative altitude, then you know you are safe. We already talked about safety, but one of the key aspects of why these kinds of shots are so difficult is getting the surfer, the long strip and the kite sail inside the frame without being too far away. The best way to achieve that is to get your drone the closest you can get it to the sail and far away from the surfer. Then get the surfer almost to hide below the sail and just follow the surfer whatever direction is heading. If the surfer and the sail are at the similar distance from your drone, the best way to frame them together is to place the surfer at one of the bottom corners and the sail to the opposite upper corner of the frame. If you want to make a shot going below the kite sail altitude, my advice is to either do it when there is only one kite surfer on the ocean or stay out of the kite surfing zone and use the zoom. You can do that by staying at the beach above the sand or going to one of the sides of the kite surfing areas. Don't go below the kite sails altitude in between kite surfers because you are going to be in danger of collision at all times. As we said before, filming kite surfing means dealing with high winds, so my advice would be to change your drone settings to high speed. Check on the wind direction before you choose your taking off and operating spot. Choose a spot so when you go out, you will be flying against the wind and when your battery levels are low and you have to return to home, then you will be flying with the wind in your favor and not against it. Constantly check on your battery levels and don't get too far away from the coast. Also remember, the higher you go, the higher wind speeds you get. So right after takeoff, go high and test your drone response to the wind. If you notice that it is unable to maintain position and start drifting too much, then it is probably better to abort the mission. Another problem you might need to solve is having too much sun reflection on your screen and also on your shots. When filming at the beach, you might get a lot of sound reflection on your screen that can make you virtually blind and unable to watch what you are filming. A good way to deal with this problem is to get a crystal clear screen like the DJI screens or the smart controller. The downside of this solution is that they are pretty expensive and sometimes even with a crystal clear screen, you might get some sound reflection. So to me, the best way to solve this 
is to put a sunshade screen on your smartphone or your tablet. Don't try to save money with one of those cheap uh, three-side screens because they won't make a real difference. Get a good immersive sunshade screen and also make sure it has a window so you can get your hand and touch the screen. To get your perfect shots, you might be moving from having the sun behind your drone to facing the sun even at the same take. So it would be a good idea to put an empty filter to your drone uh, to smooth the contrast. Um, there is a number of options of different types of empty filters according to the amount of light that you have. And also there is uh, some empty filters that you can regulate or variable like this one. By the way, this is a gift from my friend Jack from Nature Lab. So thank you so much, Jack. You might also want to consider the variable and the filters if you have a DJI Mavic to zoom because it is a bit of a nightmare to unscrew and change the filter, especially when you are at the beach. Different types of shots. We talk a bit about this on drone position, but try to practice all different angles and types of shots, like the surfer chase. The drone is chasing the surfer from behind. The drone chase, the drone is flying backwards and the surfer is heading towards the drone position. Profile view. You are following the surfer from one of the sides. Cenital or bird's eye view. You are following the surfer from above with your camera pointing 90 degrees low. The orbit. This is a very cool shot. You can start following the surfer from one of the sides and do uh, an orbit like all the way to the other side like 180 degrees or even uh, try a full orbit like a 360 degrees all around the surfer. The zoom in, try to zoom into the surfer while you are filming. The zoom out, start with a close view and zoom out revealing the whole scenery panoramic, get a panoramic view of a group of kite surfers. This could be a very useful shot for the beginning of your video. Spotlight. This is probably one of the easiest type of shots. Just hover around and make a pan moving the yaw following the surfer while it's passing by. The kite jump or lift. This is a cool epic movement that you can try to capture from different points of view. For instance, from low altitude, behind front or profile view, a close view from above. Uh, with this type of shot, you might lose the surfer at some point, but still is an epic view. A close view from the side, same thing here, you might lose the surfer at some point, or a panoramic view of the entire lift and you can get a close view from mid altitude or whatever angle um, you capture a kite surfing lift it's, it's going to be an epic view okay my inglorious bastards drone pilots i hope you enjoy this video hope you find it useful if you have more information more types of shots or whatever please share with us leave a comment below don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And as some of you already know, we create original music for all of our videos. So if you need music for your drone video, go to our website, myflyingeyes.net. Go to the music section of our online store and search for that track you need. By paying a very low license fee, you can download and use each track as many times as you want. I'm gonna leave a link on the description below and also links to the drones, the accessories and all of the stuff I talked about on this video. So before saying goodbye, I want to remind you, it is not about the drone, it is not about the pilot, it is all about the capture. 
have a nice flying day and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye. Some people call it kite surfing, some others call it kite boarding. Successful. The sail and kite surfers, if we talk about <coughs> the kite sail. Que pelotudo. Estoy haciendo cualquiera, boludo, con esto. Está todo mal.